I think the, the three key messages that came out of uh, today's meeting were particularly focused on the importance of the private sector in rural development. Um, and several, several things emerged. One, one was just how vibrant private sector is. And we looked at studies across Latin America, Africa and Asia. And all over those three continents, there's growth of supermarkets, there's a very rapidly expanding urban middle class. And uh, there's huge demand now. So farmers in rural areas are increasingly supplying um, people in the capital cities of their own countries rather than having to export food to markets. It makes it easier for them. But it also means that you're getting very interesting things happening with the supply chains. And urban, urban residents, middle class people are wanting higher standards of food and you're getting longer term relationships between the traders who are buying the food and the farmers who are growing it. So they're providing forward contracts and support to the farmers. So quite separate from aid, this is providing a huge boost for African agriculture. In addition to that, everyone has a mobile phone and increasingly that's changing the way that markets work and it's becoming much harder for a trader to exploit farmers at the, at the farm gate because uh, the farmer can phone a friend and find out what the prevailing markets are in Kampala or Nairobi uh, or, or Saigon. So technology and the, the change in supply and demand where now there's a shortage of food so the market is having to go out to find food from the farmers is meaning higher prices for farmers and they're getting a better deal. Um, but in addition to those changing chains, the volume of private sector activity in rural areas um, is, is staggering. We, we did some work looking at investment and we reckon about $200 billion uh, is spent, invested in the agricultural sector every year in developing countries. And about two thirds of that is by the private sector, and that's both farmers, but also domestic investors in the South. Uh, so that's by far the biggest chunk, and uh, the second biggest chunk is the, private, is the public sector in the South. And actually, when you look at it, foreigners coming in and uh, supporting agriculture through foreign direct investment or aid is, is a very small, um, it's, it's 2 or 3 percent of, of that total. So in a way that's very good news because it's showing that people in the south are driving their own agriculture. But of course for um, donors it presents them with a challenge. I think many donors have existed in a world where they think they're providing most of the funds, investment funds, and in a way they're, they're working almost as a, a, a Ministry of Agriculture. And the reality is in most countries that they're actually quite a small player beside um, much larger players in the public and, and the private sectors. And what that means is that they've got to change the way that they, they work. They need to engage with the pub, uh, private sector uh, and leverage those private sector resources if they want to do anything other than be a, be a, um, a side player in the, the unfurling um, agricultural scenario in the south so they need to engage with the private sector and they need to work out how they're going to do that and donors have traditionally been a bit shy of working with the private sector they've tried different ways of doing it right from working with the enabling environment and building roads to working directly with uh, uh, corporates and providing challenge funds um, to having more of a partnership with the private sector. So they've tried it in different ways. Um, but what donors have been very bad at is looking at what works. And so they're in a situation now where there's very broad scale uh, understanding that they need to work more closely with the private sector. The issue now is how to do it. And that's, that's the challenge that we, we were presented with today.